and and maybe that was me maybe that wasn't the other person maybe that wasn't the situation mm. maybe it's not my job mm. maybe it's me <laughs> and when you're able to be honest with yourself and really work through those things maybe it's not a matter of you changing jobs maybe mm. it's a ma- maybe it's not a matter of you changing churches maybe it's a matter of you digging a little deeper and addressing those deep rooted issues that you have Thank you. Thank you. So like you said, my name is Channing Clark. I'm a licensed professional counselor in Merlin and in Washington, D.C. So I'm the owner of Restore You Counseling and Consultation. Um, I connect with uh, different organizations to offer consultation um, to the uh, company for how to manage mental health within their company, as well as offering individual and family counseling services. Uh, as well as, like you said, I have a journaling book, so which I'm very excited about, a 31-day guide, guided journal to help people to get comfortable with the journaling process and begin to, to do that, as well as an aid if you're already in therapy um, that you can use to help support you um, when you go to your weekly sessions is that yeah you have to have as a therapist you have one foot in the spiritual and one foot in the in the natural and uh the idea is you meet the person where they are and a lot of times in the faith community we don't even recognize that a lot of times there are things that are deeply rooted in us because of our experiences because of our backgrounds because of a lot of different things that that kind of blur our vision Even in that scripture, it goes on to say that the blind lead the blind and they will take them into a ditch. And so we're blinded because we have these things based off of past experiences, our family background, cultures, and things of that nature that we can't really receive what God is trying to say, what Jesus wants for us to receive or to hear because of those experiences. Uh, Jesus answers and says, every plant that the heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted so when i think about uh the faith community and those barriers um i think that the root issues are more of a barrier they're bigger than me being vulnerable they're bigger than questioning my spirituality but those root issues are clogging your vision to be able to even grow spiritually and so we don't see the manifestations of the things that we learn about in the bible or the manifestation of the things that even god has maybe promised us because we have not prepared the right soil to be able to receive that and so in order to get the right soil sometimes it takes doing some work digging up some rooted things that do not belong in your soil um and when you're able to do that it creates a a posture or a place to really be able to hear from god so that you can grow and you can mature spiritually and i talked about even legacy um when you do the work that you need to do uh, for yourself what you're doing is you're blessing the generations to come when you change your thinking patterns, when you change your behaviors, you are passing on a legacy in your line, um, in your lineage, where others are, aren't don't have to fight some of the things that you had to fight because now they have a better understanding of their thoughts and their feelings and how to process their emotions in a healthy manner. You have, I thought about all the time, the anxiety, that worry, that fear had kept me from doing so many things. And I spoke to that and I said, you will not do that today. Other people need to hear your story. They need to hear your testimony through your spoken word. And if you don't do that, you're taking away from someone else's victory for someone else's being able to have a testimony of their own because they heard your story and how you got through certain things in your life. Because I I just knew that, you know, I had to release it. If the only barrier for me to do that um, was because of my own fear, 
that wasn't worthy to me. It wasn't a good enough reason. So we pray anything that blocks the hearing, anything that blocks the sight of your people, let it be removed, oh Father, and give them divine strategy, whether it's through a therapist, whether it's through a pastor, whether it's through a church, oh God, give them divine strategy to be able to remove every barrier that comes between them and you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Awesome. So you can find me at www.restoreyoucounseling.com. And I'm on Facebook and Instagram at Restore you CC. Perfect. Hey, thanks for watching the Blessing Report with Winston Mayo, the regular Christian guy, where we are trumpeting testimonies. Today we have Channing Clark, and we're interviewing her on her book, Story of My Life. She is a passionate national board certified health counselor in um, Maryland, and today she is talking about the bridge between the Bible and therapy and counseling. So we're going to allow her to introduce herself, her practices, her services, and also overview of scriptures where the Holy Spirit is the spirit of counsel. Jesus is our Prince of Peace, our counselor, and anywhere else the Lord leads us. Ms. Channing, you have the floor. Thank you, thank you. So like you said, my name is Channing Clark. I'm a licensed professional counselor in Merlin and in Washington, DC. Uh, so I'm the owner of Restore You Counseling and Consultation. Um, I connect with uh, different organizations to offer consultation um, to the uh, company for how to manage mental health within their company, as well as offering individual and family counseling services. Uh, as well as, like you said, I have a journaling book, so which I'm very excited about, a 31-day guide, guided journal to help people to get comfortable with the journaling process and begin to, to do that, as well as an aid if you're already in therapy um, that you can use to help support you um, when you go to your weekly sessions. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. This is awesome. No and so I guess, um, like we said, we're just going to let the Holy Spirit lead um, with the questioning, but I guess how to set up um, getting any hindrances out the ways. What do you think are the reservations when it comes to certain communities, especially communities of faith when it comes to counseling and therapy? And um, why are they afraid? And why, how could you encourage people not to be afraid of seeking counsel? And that is actually pretty biblical where the Lord says, in a multitude of counselors, there's wisdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I think that, you know, within the uh, faith community, as well as outside the faith community, there are a lot of barriers. Um, one is, hey, we don't talk about things outside of our community, whether that's in the church community, whether that's in a family unit, whether it's whatever uh, group you're associated with, a lot of times it is difficult to share or to be open and vulnerable about um, personal things that you're experiencing. Um, I know in the faith community, a lot of times people can think or feel that, hey, maybe it's that I'm not strong enough spiritually that I, that's the reason why you're, you're thinking that I need to go into therapy. And so the idea is, hey, let me get strong spiritually, instead of addressing or resolving some of those challenges um, that they may be experiencing. Um, and so I think those are a few, um, and most, some of the most popular barriers when it comes to counseling. So what I usually speak to those things is that, uh, in the Bible, it talks about, and I think I, I mentioned it to you before, in Matthew uh, 15, uh, we were talking about that, and it's the scripture where uh, the, uh, the leaders in the church, they were challenging the disciples about um, them not practicing what the law stated, and so the disciples went to Jesus, and they said, hey, did you realize that they were offended, and I love how Jesus responds, because he he like never, he doesn't really answer the question. 
he responds with a question, but in that question, there is, it's thought provoking and it causes you to look deeper into what the issue is. And, and really, I think that's a part of the counseling process as well. It's, it's not that you come to counseling and someone else is giving you the answers, but they're allowing you to go through the process to think a little deeper about what it is that's going on or challenging you. So going back to that scripture, uh, Jesus answers and says, every plant that the heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. It hit you. It looks like it hit you right there. Yes. And, and what, he, what Jesus was saying there, um, he goes on to go a little more in depth into this in the scripture. But what he was saying there is that, hey, his response to to you all, to the disciples, to me, that response, it's an indicator, it's a sign that there is something that is deeply rooted within them that needs to come out so that they can receive the word, um, which was Jesus, and receive what he had to offer. And a lot of times in the faith community, we don't even recognize that a lot of times there are things that are deeply rooted in us because of our experiences, because of our backgrounds, because of a lot of different things that that kind of blur our vision. Even in that scripture, it goes on to say that the blind will lead the blind and they will take them into a ditch. And so we're blinded because we have these things based off of past experiences, our family background, cultures, and things of that nature that we can't really receive what God is trying to say, what Jesus wants for us to receive or to hear because of those experiences. So when I think about uh, the faith community and those barriers, um, I think that the root issues are more of a barrier. They're bigger than me being vulnerable. They're bigger than questioning my spirituality, but those root issues are clogging your vision to be able to even grow spiritually. And so many times, some people I've heard, you know, God, they pray about it, God reveals it, and they can work through it. But there are other people in situations that are just a lot more complex. Um, I like to look at it as like, it's like this big puzzle piece, you know, those a thousand piece mm. puzzles. <laughs> and you know, it's fun. Um, and you have the guy, you have that image that's telling you, hey, this is what you need to do to put it together. Mm -hmm. But when you have too many pieces, it's hard to do that on your own. And you need a second pair of eyes to be able to help you to map up and put into place. How do you put all these experiences? How do you put your relationship with with God? How do you put your relationship with your family? How do you put your relationships in all the things that uh, that are challenging you? How do you put that into perspective so that you can be able to really grow spiritually and be able to um, to resolve those those root issues that come up? Um, I know the other scripture that comes into mind is with Matthew 13, where it talks about the parable of the sower. And it talks about the different grounds. So there was a farmer who sold a seed and it was the same seed that was sown into all these different grounds. But there were certain grounds that weren't able to, to take hold or take root to that seed. And that's what can happen, you know, with believers that we can be in church, we can sit under the same word, but for some mm. reason, we're not able to really receive it. We don't see the manifestations of the things that we learn about in the Bible or the manifestation of the things that even God has maybe promised us because we have not prepared the right soil to be able mm. to receive that. And so in order to get the right soil, Sometimes it takes doing some work, digging up some rooted things that do not belong in your soil. Um, and when you're able to do that, it creates a, a posture or a place to really be able to hear from God so that you can grow and you can mature spiritually. So uh, I think that, you know, that is kind of how I connect when I think about um therapy and I think about Christianity or you know religion but I think about those things and how they pair together I look at it as you're you're taking the steps to remove the barriers that prevent you from growing spiritually excellent you know what's hilarious is that when you talked about um 
being planted. I had a friend <laughs> just this weekend um, that was a little um, snarky with me. <laughs> and <laughs> she said that, hey, this is just the way I am. And I had a scripture um, that says, what will follow us in the last days? It says people will be lovers of selves. People will be without natural affection. And I said, how do you know that's you? And that's one of those things that we don't understand. We take things on as identity. Yeah. And you said that anything not planted by God will be uprooted. And yeah. so when we try to, because literally that's all of like the fall of man of like, hey, um, or even when the devil was tempting Jesus in the wilderness for 40 days, he was like, hey, I'll give you all this possession if you cast yourself down. I will um, give you all this wherever, wherever. He was tempting the Lord by his identity. As a man thinketh, so is he. And so when we have things that are deeply rooted, even I was telling uh, Channing off screen, uh, when it comes to deliverance ministry, you have to start with the root. And so um, in short, in deliverance ministry or prayer intercession ministry, you'll talk around in circles if you never get to the root of like, oh, this is a, a family issue. This is a, a generational curse. This is a soul tie. This is maybe it's just a demon or whatever. But sometimes it's in the practicum, in the real reality of like, hey, you just had some things in your past. And so when you're talking about like, hey, there's some practical steps this is James 5. It says, confess your faults one to another, that your sins will be forgiven and that you will be healed. Confession is a spiritual principle. So this is where therapy and life like intersect so well. So I guess that is. Can I add to yes, that? Okay. Because <laughs> as you were talking, I was just, I was already waiting for my moment to jump in. <laughs> But um, what I think about, even when you talk about deliverance, right? Mm -hmm. So deliverance happens and then there oftentimes is not follow-up care. Oh. So if you don't understand how you got into a place of needing deliverance, then what will prevent you from getting back into that place? You can't blame the person who delivered you. You can't blame Jesus. You can't blame the people around, but really looking at, okay, if I don't recognize how this root came to be, and I don't, I, I'm not intentional about not allowing another opening to eh. happen where this can come back in and I need deliverance all over again. Um, so, you know, even with that, and I think a lot of times there's not really much education on what happens after deliverance. Yes, deliverance is real. It happens. But you have to be able to maintain that deliverance. And that takes being intentional about um, recognizing the things, the thoughts, the behavior, the places, the people that impacted you getting into that position and being intentional about not getting back into that place. So I'm sorry. I just wanted to oh, add girl, that. <laughs> you better interrupt me with some wisdom. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. Um I was telling Channing off um, screen that um, Matthew 13 is one of my favorite scriptures because you have three parables in one um, at the bottom. It's a pretty long um, chapter and it continues on and it says that if a man, um, in short, like cat, um, cast out a demon and sweeps the house, um, that the demon will go to and fro looking for a place to rest. And then if the person does not fill that space, with the Holy Spirit, the demon will come to the former vessel with seven demons more worse than himself. And the state of the person is worse than the former. So when you're talking about the patterns, the feeling, all that, I'm like, wow, this is so <laughs> amazing how it just aligns so perfectly. I guess this leads to my next question because... You you are in your bag, Channing. So you have uh, <laughs> um, creative counseling solutions um, and products. Could you explain, I guess, how Restored You started um, so people can like get familiar with you? And I guess kind of list some of your practices because you are in your word. And I think that's one thing people are really hesitant when it comes to therapy and counseling. A lot of Christians go to very secular 
um, councils. But you are a woman of the word. <laughs> Even our first conversation when you were praying, I was like, we going to get along. And so I think that reservation comes from um, the secular world. So I guess, how do you approach things? Because, you know, we have to be um, in the world. The Lord says like, hey, I wouldn't have you out of the world because that's to, of no use. So Christians have to be able to navigate the marketplace. So um, how are you engaging that? Because you don't have all Christian clients. You have um, secular clients and you have um, non-believers as clients. So I know there's a lot of questions, but I guess restore you, um, how you navigate um, the secular and the sacred and whatever um, creative practices that you have with your services. Okay. Well, I think one thing when you talk about how do you manage that balance between uh, the spiritual life and then the physical, right? And there's actually a book, it's called Soul Physicians. I remember mm. uh, uh, quite a few years ago, I actually went to a training on soul physicians soul uh, physicians. And one thing that they talked about is that, yeah, you have to have, as a therapist, you have one foot in the spiritual and one foot in the, in the natural. And uh, the idea is you meet the person where they are. So there are people who come to me who have no clue that I'm a Christian or, you know, don't know. There are some that select me because I am a Christian um, and they come in. But even though they come into me, whether they're Christian or not, I meet them where they are. So it doesn't mean that I'm bombarding you with scripture and that's what we're digging into. I'm, you know, think about the root. Using the root is not related to scripture. So when we we're getting deep into what the issue is, where they are and whether or not um, they can do that. So I like to look at it as if, you know, I have different tools and one of the tools mm. that I use is scripture. Mm. Now, when I use that tool, who I use it with, it just depends on where we are in the process and is that what's, what's needed in that moment? So that's usually how I like to sort of balance it. And, you know, I, I believe like as a believer, I take the word with me wherever I go. And so whether I'm in a counseling session with someone who's maybe not a believer, I still take that in there with me. And that alone, just having, you know, that within me, it helps to guide me um, throughout the therapy process to, to help the whoever the client is to be able to navigate what they're going through. Um, and really, that was one of the questions you asked was about, you know, where did restore you counseling and consultation come from? And that is really, you know, one of my visions was to be able to help other people to get restored. Um, I personally have gone through my own restoration process, and I'm still continuing to go through that process. And so um, as I learn and as I grow, I want to be able to share that knowledge, that insight with other people. Um, and, you know, one of, one of my favorite scriptures that really motivates me is, uh, Revelations 12. Hey, hit the, it too. it's, um, right. uh, we, they, they overcome, overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their yeah, testimony. testimony. And, and, I and that was, hey. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And, uh, really what a lot of people don't know is that I do spoken word as well. And <laughs> I, I do spoken word as well. And the first time that I went to perform, I, 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 in, anybody that knows me growing up would know that Shannon does not like to speak in front of people. Mm. She does not, I didn't like to share any of my writings or anything like that because I was afraid that people could use it against me that, um, you know, they won't understand my story or what it is that I'm trying to convey within my poetry or my spoken word performance. Um, but that scripture came to mind where God was really impressing on me. Other people need to hear your story. They need to hear your testimony through your spoken word. And if you don't do that, you're taking away from someone else's victory for someone else's being able to have a testimony of their own because they heard your story and how you got through certain things in your life. And so that really motivated me to actually go and start performing and doing um, uh, different spoken word pieces and things of that nature. Uh, in fact, I remember one day I was going to an audition and I could literally feel the anxiety in my stomach. Mm. 
And when I felt it, I literally, I turned to my stomach. I had never done this before. I looked at my stomach and I said, you will not eh. be anxious today. Authority. Said, you will not do that. You have, I thought about all the times that anxiety, that worry, that fear had kept me from doing so many things. And I spoke to that and I said, you will not do that today. And I tell you, when I opened up my mouth <laughs> to perform for that audition, they were looking at me because they knew me for, you know, a little bit of time. So they looked at me and they were like, who are you? Like, how did that come out of you? And um, I, you know, to God be the glory, because I, I just knew that, you know, I had to release it. If the only barrier for me to do that um, was because of my own fear, that wasn't worthy to me. It wasn't a good enough reason. So, mm. hey. <laughs> Amazing. I am so hyped because like, like you were saying, so many things are just running through my mind where just one that's real pressing is um, perfected love does not torment. And mm. what we're all looking for is that God-sized hole to be filled. And um, that's mm -hmm. through fellowship, communion with the Father. And mm -hmm. when it comes to like fear, the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and the sound mind. You literally were using your God-given authority over your mm -hmm. situation. So I'm just, yeah. it's, it's just so interesting, like um, bridging the sacred and the um, secular. We have so many um, practical steps to Christian principles, like the mm -hmm. Bible and make it submit to the word of God. You have dominion, you have authority, but I do think maybe it is to, um, spiritualize, um, where people are like, man, it's just the Bible. I don't believe in it or whatever, whatever. But when you're doing it on your regular marketplace, your regular day to day, like, hey, you're not going to be afraid. Boom, it works. There, there's no, there's no, I don't know, hyper spirituality behind it. It, it, it just makes it really practical. And um, when it comes to the practical, just to really double back um, with the story, I was talking to a guy and he was like leading me in the Lord. And he, um, we're like kind of doing like dream interpretation of this prophecy that I had. And um, what he was saying, it, like in short, I was, I, there was this guy and he was kayaking and um, so forth and so on. And he got rich um, by being a kayak manufacturer and a um, seller of kayaks, right? And so, you know, dream interpretation, um, I'm getting this thing wrong. <laughs> like, he was like, you're missing the point of the, like, he was like, oh, I should go into, I would say, oh, I should go into kayaking business. He was like, no, no, no. Yes, that's right. But that's not what he, the Lord's trying to say to you. And he was saying like, um, and again, I may be taking the fun out of the dream, but kayaks are a two-person vessel. And so what the Lord is saying, like my purpose will be between me and him. But also about kayaking is that, what do you do in boats? You fish. And I was like, bro, well, I said I missed it in entirely. But again, counsel comes through um, other people sometimes, just like a therapist or a counselor. But he was like, hey, the Lord wants you to be a fisher of men. And as being a fisher of men, you need to have different bait. And when I say he opened it up like so much, I was like, I was not getting that revelation. I wasn't asking the right questions. <laughs> and um, when it comes to having like that different bait, like you're saying, meeting um, each one of your um, people is that um, Colossians 3, I was speaking to earlier, it says season your words with salt that you know how to meet everyone individually. And so that's the power of testimony. The spirit of God um, is able to do so powerfully because um, again, we're spirit, uh, we're perfected love is there is no torment. And so if you have a spirit of fear or if you have torment when it comes to your past, there is no freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's life and liberty and freedom. And so that's why testimony is so powerful. There's so much freedom behind it. There's so much revel uh, <laughs> revelation, but it's so much, um, I don't know. It's just like freedom begets freedom. So when you share, it's like, yo, it's doing all these amazing things. And so I guess... Where do you see, um, I guess, kind of like 
mostly um, your journal when it comes to like this self-discovery because um, in this um, journal, you're finding self-discovery through testimony. And what does the 31-day um, journey look like when it comes to being able to tell your testimony, able to speak that thing? And I guess just like what people expect. Or um, I know when we spoke, you had a very specific what people, what you wanted people to get out of your 31-day journal with um, Story of My Life. So mm -hmm. what is that testimony that you wanted? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I guess the, the testimony or the real gift that you get out of it, especially through self-discovery, is increased awareness about mm. who you are, about what you're feeling in the moment, and being able to dig a little deeper to see where is that feeling coming from. I know earlier I talked about that root issue mm -hmm. and uh one of the things when your eyes are open to be able to see i think even like you're talking about with your dream and getting that interpretation your vision of the dream was limited mm -hmm. so you needed someone else to come in to expand your vision to give you a little more sight so that you could dig deeper into what was actually going on so that you can get clarity and know what you need to do moving forward and it's the same thing with journaling and with my journal what it does is it gives you different questions to thank you to explore to explore internally what is going on why am i feeling this way um i even have a life satisfaction surveys throughout the journal where you get to check in review the past journal entries look at how often you were feeling down how often you were feeling angry and really get a, a better understanding of how you work how you operate why is it that that was happening for that period of time because that's when you're really able to get to the root of the issue and be able to identify what is blocking me from growing spiritually what is blocking me from being able to have a better quality of relationships with other people because you know as you talk about that's a part of what our ministry should be for all of us is being able to have relationships with other people so that we can share our testimony and people will be able to receive it because they know us personally and so even with that as you go through this process as you go through the journal you're able to get an increased awareness of who you are how you operate why you do certain things understanding that and being able to see the difference um even as you go through that process to see what type of impact it's having on you um and with that comes i believe a testimony i actually just did um, a video that I sent out to a few people and i talked about even legacy um, when you do the work that you need to do uh, for yourself, what you're doing is you're blessing the generations to come. When you change your thinking patterns, when you change your behaviors, you are passing on a legacy in your line, um, in your lineage, where others are, aren't, don't have to fight some of the things that you had to fight because now they have a better understanding of their thoughts and their feelings and how to process their emotions in a healthy manner, how to recognize when, hey, you know what, I was a little out of line and, and maybe that was me, maybe that wasn't the other person, maybe that wasn't the situation, mm. maybe it's not my job, mm. maybe it's me. <laughs> And when you're able to be honest with yourself and really work through those things, maybe it's not a matter of you changing jobs. Maybe mm. it's a ma maybe it's not a matter of you changing churches. Maybe it's a matter of you digging a little deeper and addressing those deep rooted issues that you have. So I say all that to say that I, you know, the journaling guy, I structure in a way where anybody can use it. You don't, even if it's your first time journaling, a lot of times I have clients, I've encouraged them to journal, but the barrier for them was that, hey, I don't know what to write about. So I was always throwing out journaling prompts and I said, let me just make a book and throw out, you know, here are your journaling prompts. Go ahead and, you know, give you a guide as to how to go through the process of journaling um, to make it easier. And so you can really get to the root of a lot of the issues and things like that that come up for you. Mm. As you talk about prompts, I may have to hit you with your own. We're going to hit, <laughs> hit you with day uh, 14. Let's make a wish. Select the feeling that best describes how you feel today. Love, joy, anger, sadness, fear. Writing prompts. Finish the following sentence. I wish I felt. I wish I had. I wish I could. So out of the five, Channing, 
What are you feeling today? Love, joy, anger, sadness, or fear? Good question. I think today I'm actually feeling joy. Mm. And I'll say that because I was, I was, I was trying to figure some things out, um, figure some things out and how do I, like I talked about that puzzle. I was trying to put the pieces of that puzzle together and I was able to speak with um, a spiritual counselor of mine and not in that moment, but when I woke up this morning, I had clarity and it was, I feel like it came about because of that conversation. And so just the joy that, you know, nobody else may care about it, but God knows that I was struggling to map out some pieces. And so for him to put things into perspective for me, I'm feeling really good. So I would say joy today. <laughs> hey, that is what's up. It's, it's so amazing. I, I ain't gonna lie. I'm going to use the Bible scripture right here. It says, don't let your own mouth praise you. Let another man praise you. So I'm just going to praise Channing and her work and um, restore you all her services because I told her <laughs> um, what I've been following in my own life is recognizing the patterns of God. So last episode, we had Peter on. That was God sent. And Channing, I told her while I was on the phone, I was like, she's God sent <laughs> her whoever. And how easy things have been. And how, like, I don't want to use the word kindred spirits, but um, the Bible says the spirit bears witness. And so when we were praying together as we're reading the Bible, everything was so even. It was so easy. And um, going against strife, even what she's saying, I'm like, man, this is stuff that my church is teaching on. And it's such a testimony of the goodness of God, because um, one thing that I learned in some of my former churches when it comes to spiritual leadership is um, when you're talking about re um, relationships and getting along with people is people want to be seen, they want to be known, and they want to be understood and heard, right? And so that's where you get deep intimacy. That's where you get the deep work. And so... Um, one part of that is making sure you are seen, heard, known of yourself. Are you hearing <laughs> yourself? Um, you are actually bothered <laughs> by this. This is upsetting you. These are patterns that are continuing on in all of these workspaces, all of these churches, and all of these friendships, and also romantic relationships. But am I not aware enough to recognize the patterns of God, but also the patterns of myself? And so the last part, um, when it came to, I'm not going to lie, that thing just left as soon as I said it. <laughs> uh, oh, self-discovery. Um, I was reading a book. And um, I'm not saying this for the extremes, but it was talking about the millennial generation. And what it said is that we uh, would be very off uh, when it comes to our age range if we knew that we are the cause for every bad thing in our life. Right. And, you know, like certain things you, you can't account for. It's, it's sometimes it is other people. But if yeah. like if I if I lose a job because I'm showing up late, I'm like, bro, come on. Like, yo, like have some leniency on me. They don't have they don't have to. Like if if I want to um, be pro, uh, romantically um, detached from somebody and then they choose to get someone better that wants to settle down, I can't be like, man, I was going to get my stuff to get. You need to take responsibility for yourself. <laughs> and I think that's what the Bible says is like, hey, we're in need of a savior because we need saving. Like, that's me taking responsibility of like, yo, I, I need help. Like, <laughs> And so uh, that's where it's so cool about your um, work being called Restore You because restoration means to return to the former glory. And so um, I guess in closing... Uh, what former glory can you speak to someone today? <laughs> what <laughs> former glory can you can I speak to today? Um, and I guess what I'll say is something that I've prayed about. Um, in it was just you know in the scripture Psalm one thirty nine where it talks about um, even in your mother's womb God knew you and he formed you and he, he mapped out every day of your life. And 
as we're talking about like with the roots and things of that nature, um, a lot of times our experiences, they cloud that original intent that God had for us when we were in our mother's womb. And so one of my prayers has been, God, I pray that you'll restore me to the nature and the character that you saw, that you created even in my mother's womb. Any piece of me that has been built up because of experiences that I've had that doesn't truly add up to who you created me to be when I was in my mother's womb, let those things be removed from me in the name of Jesus. So that's what I will speak to everyone and I pray, you know, pray that prayer yourself that those things that have been added because of what I've been through, if it wasn't God's intent for that to be added on to me, I want it to be removed. I don't want to hold on to protective layers that don't work in, you know, don't allow me to grow closer with God or with other people and things of that nature. So that's continually, you know, my prayer. And that's what I would encourage, you know, for other people to really explore, like you were talking about before, you know, is that really who you are? Mm -hmm. Or is that something that that God truly intends for you um, to have or to be or to do? Oh, great. This is this has been so awesome. I knew it was gonna be a bunch of fun. Um, <laughs> everyone, again, this is Channing Clark with Restore You and her book, Story of My Life. And so everything is going to be on screen um, throughout the interview. But also, can you um, tell them, and it's also going to be in the description box below and on the website, um, your social media platforms and also your website platforms where they can purchase and find you. Awesome. So you can find me at www.RestoreYouCounseling.com and I'm on Facebook and Instagram at RestoreYouCC. Excellent. So we're just going to, um, end, to um, end it here, I guess, with a um, prayer. And also um, check back next week, new videos, Wednesdays and Sundays. And we're just going to um, thank Channing Clark. When I say... You know, you, you, I need to be careful with my mouth because sometimes it says um, where there's a lot of um, talking, there's sin. So I don't want to offend <laughs> all my other guests. But I've loved everybody that has been on and Channing Clark has been sent by God. I am, it says um, those who water others will water themselves and themselves will be refreshed. And so, you know, relationships with people, strangers that the Lord sends, but there are divine connections. It just restores like this like, excitement of like the spontaneity, the love that the father has for us. So thanks for sliding in the DMs, Chani. <laughs> <And the emails. laughs> no problem. <laughs> So, so, Lord, um, we us um, pray and prophesy everything that was spoken today uh, will be on good ground. Uh, we come against um, patterns of um, cycles, um, generational curses, um, anything of the former self that is not our identity in Christ. We pray by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus that you restore every listener by your Holy Spirit to the former glory that we are returning to it is by not by strength not by might but by the spirit of god that jesus does these things that we will be full we'll have shalom and we'll have um perfect restoration in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit and chain go ahead and pray god i know you got that heat <laughs> my gosh um <laughs> Uh, dear Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to get together, oh God, to give you praise and glory and show, Father, how you would like for us to function and operate, Lord God. So we just pray in the name of Jesus that you, Father, will allow anyone who is under the sound of my voice, Lord God, God, that you, oh Father, will speak to them specifically, Lord God, that you will reveal the hidden things within, oh Father, that needs to be revealed so that they can draw closer and nearer to you, oh Father. So we pray anything that blocks the hearing, anything that blocks the sight of your people, let it be removed 
removed, oh Father, and give them divine strategy, whether it's through a therapist, whether it's through a pastor, whether it's through a church, oh God, give them divine strategy to be able to remove every barrier that comes between them and you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Perfect. Thanks for watching, and we are out. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, thanks for watching The Blessing Report at theblessingreport.com. And if you would like to partner with us as we continue to make good family-friendly Christian content, make sure to become a subscriber at theblessingreport.com where you can be a monthly or a weekly donator, or you can make a one-time donation in the description box below or the link in our bio. And if you purchase from the blessingreport.com slash shop, a portion of your proceeds goes to help fund our productions when you buy from our Christian clothing. And if you'd like to partner with us as we move towards our feature-led film and our TV series, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and turn on your bell notifications for we have new videos and podcasts every Wednesday and Sunday, so come back next week. Thank you so much for your love and support. Make sure to check out a playlist, subscribe, and watch another video. God bless.